Good morning, everyone. I should say good afternoon because it's afternoon. <laughs> uh, how are you? I hope everybody's okay. It's October the 29th, 2016. And uh, I have a couple of devotionals for you today. But um, I just wanted to say, before I get into it, um, the devotional, uh, the uh, scripture that the Father gave me yesterday was just so powerful. Psalm 140, and it speaks about what the governments are doing behind the people's backs and how they set in a trap and a snare and a net for them um, to trap all the people and, and turn them into slaves and Satan will rise and create this one world system. Um, I think what, um, actually, also I the Father had me look up what 140 meant in the Greek, and it means, uh, beloved, I have chosen you. And uh, I believe that this was the Father's response to something I asked him, because uh, the Father had sent me, uh, called me uh, by a, a biblical woman's name, and um, it was a um, an endearing, something endearing that the Father did in in our communication back and forth and um he also sent me a, a, a played played a song to follow it up during the night in my ear and um then um i questioned i had a question for him regarding this communication that we had and um he spoke that morning, and something strange happened. It, it was almost audible, and it sounded robotic. And I said, Father, that's not your voice. And um, I was really c confounded because um, it, it was a mechanical, it was two words that he spoke, and it was mechanical almost robotic or alien-like. And um, I don't know what the elite are doing or what kind of uh, powers they have to maybe miscommunicate the father's messages to his children or interrupt the signal. I mean, you know, Satan, Satan knows more than we do about the, the father and... Um, you know, he was with the father and he got thrown out. So he knows more about what goes on in the higher realm than we do. And, um, you know, he's been, he's been evolving his, his congregation here on the earth to deceive everybody. And um, I don't know what he's got, how he did that, but he, he, he took my father's words and he actually almost made them audible and didn't sound like my father at all. And I know my father's voice. So the father sent me that morning, that 140, and actually he told me that I chose you. So basically don't listen to anything like that uh, because it's not coming from me. You know, there's some kind of, they're setting a trap. That's what he said in that scripture. That was his way of telling me, I spoke to you, but they did something and they're setting a trap. So um, I don't know what's happening in your walk with the Lord, but um, I know my father's voice. And uh, actually, my father came back and warned me with yesterday's um, scripture and the meaning of 140 to tell me that they're setting a snare, Judy, and they're going to pay. I'm going to destroy the wicked. I'm going to destroy them with their own uh, plans. And, and I'm going to rain down um, fire and brimstone on them, and my children will be safe. That's what he said in, in, the, in the scripture. So uh, just to let you know, the battle that's been going on, some of us are aware of the battle and some of us aren't, but, um, you know, the ones that are closest to the Father, I mean, they're the ones that are really getting slammed because, you know, Satan wants to take, uh, God's children away from him 
And he'll do, he won't stop at anything to try to deceive God's children. So anything that you get that seems, you know, out of the normal, take it to the Father and wait. Take it to the Father and wait. And the Father will confirm like he did with me. And uh, it was just amazing how the Father is. He's so wonderful. <laughs> Satan, you can never get me from the Father because he's mine. <laughs> okay, I have a couple of devotionals for you. So I better just like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, thank you for another day. Thank you so much for your holy communion and how you answer so swiftly. You are just so incredible. How you protect your children. I can feel how powerful you are. And I know that you're in control of everything that's happening simultaneously. And um, I pray, Father, I bless you, Father. I know that you have to do things you don't want to do in this time that, that's coming upon the earth. I know it breaks your heart, but uh, we're doing the best that we can, your children here, to, um, to bring every soul that you have your eyes set upon, uh, bring them to you, Father, and into safety in these last days. God bless you, Father. You have some job ahead of you. I love you so much, and I can't wait to go home. In Jesus' name, amen. This is called Turning Obstacles into Victories. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And that's from Joshua 6, 16. As Joshua looked at the fortifications of Jericho, he realized that taking the city would be no small task, especially the seemingly impenetrable wall that stood before him. However, God promised Joshua that Israel would triumph, and Joshua believed him. And for generations to come, the children of Israel would ask about the onslaught at Jericho, to which their parents would respond that it was by shouts and trumpet blasts that the walls were destroyed because the Lord's power was with them. No battering ram, no warfare strategy was necessary only obedience, and that was from Joshua 6. Friend, is there a problem impeding your progress today? The lesson for you is that God will show you how to overcome every obstacle by his power. It may not be what you expect. In fact, the Father's methods will certainly surprise you, but he knows exactly what is needed to lead you to triumph. Therefore, do exactly as he says, then shout his praises and trust him to give you the victory. Amen and amen. Wasn't that great? And here's a prayer we can say. Lord, I give you all my obstacles, for I know that you alone can lead me to victory over them. Amen. And this second one is called Correct Self Appraisals. God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. And that's from 2 Thessalonians uh, 1 and 5. Do you have a question if you're really worthwhile, lovable, acceptable, or competent? Have you ever felt as if you don't measure up enough to be of any true value to others? These feelings of inadequacy are just that feelings. They're not facts. And they blind you to who you really are in Christ. This is why you should always base your opinions on what God's word says about you. The Lord's judgment of who you are and what you are worth is more accurate than what you think of yourself because his view is eternal. 
He doesn't appraise you by investigating temporary issues such as who you know or where you live or your title or your income or even how you look. Rather, he sees you through the blood of Jesus and desires for you to seek him wholeheartedly. Friend, take your focus off what you think or what others think about you and embrace what the Father says. No doubt your self-esteem will automatically improve because God's opinion is the only one that really counts and it's forever. <laughs> what a great devotional. And the prayer we can say is, Lord Jesus, in you and you alone, I am worthy. Thank you for making me worthwhile. Amen. And yeah, you know, the most interesting thing about this is that when we feel something, we give the feelings more validity than we give the facts. So what I challenge you to do, if you have this condemnation on yourself, is just make a list of what is absolutely true about you on an index card. And every time you feel unworthy, just take that index card out and look at it. And it'll remind you of what God thinks about you. Amen. Amen. I love you, everybody. Jesus loves you. Never forget it. He loves you. He's coming very, very soon. He told me so. I know. I believe. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.